So yeah, my announcement is that I'm going to be available for lessons. And there's several ways we can do this. If people prefer a live session, we can do that by Zoom. Or if you'd rather me record a uh, personalized video with very, very detailed instructions with a, your own private video, I can do that as well. Of course, that has the advantage of being able to watch it over and over again to uh, pick up whatever you need to learn. So the email link below is JethroTollLessons uh, at gmail.com. So you can contact me there uh, for any inquiries and uh, you know the rates will be certainly competitive with anything you'll find out there. Now these lessons won't be confined to just Jethro Tull songs. If you have other songs that you are interested in learning and, uh, and they're within my capability, I can certainly entertain uh, teaching those as well. So it doesn't have to be a Jethro Tull song. It can be any acoustic song or electric song for that matter. Uh, I'm certainly not a virtuo. I'm certainly not a virtuoso on the electric guitar, but I can hack my way through most things or a lot of things. So, so that's my announcement, and here we go with the Aqualong tutorial. <laughs> That's a three-quarter speed play along with the opening section, the electric guitar part of Aqualong. As you know, Aqualong was Jethro Tull's uh, best-selling album of all time, released in 1971. I really think that that album started to show the development of the band as musicians and started to really get into the area of virtuosity in a lot of their playing. Um, Certainly the playing on the previous albums, in particular Martin Barr's playing, was, was really good, but when we got to the Aqualung album, he started throwing down solos that were just outrageous. And uh, so I, I think he was really coming into his own as a guitar player, a soloist, a musician. The opening riff starts on the A string. Go down the E string on the, on the third fret. Martin Barr says that he used a Les Paul Jr. on all of Aqualung album. That was the only guitar, that, electric guitar, that he recalls playing on the album. The 1959 Les Paul Jr. just had a P90 pickup back here on the bridge, so it's a one pickup guitar. I'm playing this Telecaster that has lace sensor pickups in it. Those pickups are kind of in between a single coil and a humbucker. We do have the humbucker configuration back here, but I'm just playing the, the, the one pickup nearest the bridge back here. The, the tone is dry, there's no reverb or echo on it. And uh, he's got some gain on there, but it's not crazy gain, so don't crank up the gain so that it really distorts out too much. You want those notes to be clear. But when you start playing the power chords, you want the signal to break up a little bit and some distortion. So some gain, but not, uh, I think the temptation here is to put too much gain on the guitar rather than, uh, rather than the reverse. So yeah, he repeats that three times. And then we're playing 
this D flat power chord. So when I'm playing this, I just play the A string and the D string. You could play the G string in there, but I think uh, Martin is just playing the two strings. So he just marches those up in two fret increments. And then he starts, then he's just playing single note lines after that. Once again, he gives that note a little vibrato. And he's playing that down on the low E string down here, which just kind of gives it a little bit more beef and meat to it, uh, just a little more eerie sound to it. And then we're coming back on the A string. And then we're ended up on the D power chord. Now on the third time when he does that, he comes back to the riff and he adds a major third. Now he's actually overdubbed that with another guitar, but when I was playing this uh, in bands back in high school, I would add the third in there. With riffs back in with riffs back in that time, it was fairly common for guitarists to add a third above. Uh, you can't really do that if you're going to minor chords and things, if that's going to be, uh, if it's chordal and you've got minor chords in it, that, that's not going to work playing a major third over it. But when you're just riffing and you just have single note lines and very simple chords, then you can add that major third interval above it and it, it always sounds so cool. So I would do that when I was playing it. So you can see I'm just adding a major third interval above all those notes. So that's all there is to it. Um, opening is pretty simple. So I've already covered the electric guitar solo in a previous tutorial, so you can check that out for the uh, guitar solo in the middle.
So there we have the acoustic portion to Aqualung. Capote on the third fret. A lot of his usual devices. A lot of hammer-ons with the chords and things. Uh, the one thing he's not doing in this section, which, you know, is once again is such a trademark of his playing. He's not doing those slurred upstrokes that are so common to his playing. So this is pretty much just straightly strummed. We start on the E minor. Alright, so you can see how he's doing that hammer-on business again with the index in the, in the uh, middle finger. Going to the A chord. And then lifting open the, the G string and B string again, going to an A minor, and he briefly lifts his index finger off the B string on that. So when he gets to A minor, it's So the first one is back to the E minor. So you hear the, how the A minor goes once again? So all those verses are the same. Now and then it gets to the middle and it picks up the tempo and he, he does the... Uh, he mutes the strings and strums across the strings. So yeah, he hits the E minor and then mutes the strings, keeps strumming, plays the D, keeps strumming. Alright, so then when it gets to the uh, guitar solo... Goes to the, from E minor to D to A. And then when he plays the A minor, the bass guitar is playing this note in the bass above an A minor chord. So that's why it doesn't sound quite like a, a just a regular A minor. And then he does the same thing on the E minor chord. The bass plays the third below. And then it's back to the D. And then the chords during the guitar solo are E minor, C, and D. Mm -hmm. 
So it just keeps repeating that. <clears throat> now when he comes into that slow part coming out of the gu guitar solo. So yeah, that's really subtle that he changes it up there a little bit on the A minor and E minor chords, so it's... He plays that on the A, up to the D string. And then same motif with the E chord. Of course, you know, if you're playing this by yourself, you certainly can do the riff. You can play the whole song with the capo on the third fret. think about it for just a second but you can easily play the whole song with the capo on the third fret So yeah, there's nothing to keep you from playing the entire song with the capo on the third fret if you want to do the whole thing by yourself. Alright, so that's Aqualung from 1971.